Hello everybody, this is Hero. Uh, I have something special for you, and I always say I have something special for you, but this is the start of a new series. This is the start of Demon Souls. I've wanted to play Demon Souls and put it up on the channel for a while, but just recently I've had the time and the will, so what I have for you is Soul Level 6, New Game Plus, Pure Black World Tendency, and what that means to those who uh, perhaps don't know Demon Souls very well, or you're watching this for the first time, or you just need a refresher. Pure Black World Tendency occurs when you die in human form, sorry, in body form, in uh, any of the worlds that are not the Nexus, the hub world that connects the five Archstones that you'll be playing through throughout the game. And what happens when you die in uh, human form is the enemies of the world get tougher. They get a little more health, uh, they do more damage to you, but they also drop better items, and they also give you more souls for killing them. So it's a bit of a catch-22 of you can make the game harder for yourself, but get the game to reward you. And I'm a big fan of that kind of a an approach to game design because I like being able to say that I did something absolutely perfectly. I may not have done it the most, so the fastest way, I may not have done it the uh, the most efficient way, but I most certainly did something to the best of my ability, and I believe the best that anyone could do playing a game where obviously the goal is to not die is if you don't take damage, then that means that you have conquered the game. The game has tried its best to kill you, and you have stopped it from doing that. That may sound a bit pretentious to some to say, Oh, well, I, I beat this game on the hardest difficulty, and it was amazing. And I'm amazing, and, you know, give me a blowjob. But that's not how... <laughs> that's not how you need to look at it, because... It's just a sense of achievement, and a lot of games these days don't seem to want to give you that sense of achievement, or worse, they want to give you that sense of achievement really, really fast. So what I like to do when I play these games is get my sense of achievement, the sense of achievement that I want. And at the moment what's happening is this is a something called a pure black world tendency event where you can only go to this area of the Boletarian Palace, the first level in Demon Souls, if you have pure Black World tendency. So this is part of a, this is a bit of a watermark, a bit of a, a bit of proof to say that, yo, this is the hardest this game can possibly get uh, at this NG+. So what happened during this event was a Black Phantom version of an NPC known as Executioner Meralda popped up in that area of the Boletarian Palace because the game is supposed to be as hard as it can be. And these special Black Phantom enemies, these NPCs, uh, they do a few things. They're exceptionally hard to kill, usually, unless you manage to cheese them, like for for, ex for execution of Meralda, you can actually aggro her and drag her all the way up to a pit that will be coming to soon, and you can backstab her into that pit, which I admittedly thought about doing, but she's not that tough to take care of if you can get your parry timings down, as you saw. But what happens is these special Black Phantom enemies will drop a special piece of loot that you will not be able to get anywhere else in the game, usually. So, I know for a fact that Setsuki, the Black Phantom Setsuki, uh, in Shrine of Storms, drops a Hiltless, which is funny because he's considered one of the hardest Black Phantoms, and yet his, his, his loot you can actually just pick up somewhere else in Shrine of Storms as well, so I'm not entirely sure why you'd want to kill him except for, you know, bragging rights and also the fact that when you kill one of these special black phantoms, one of the five 
NPC black phantoms in the game, your character tendency, which is different to your world tendency, goes up by one point. And when you reach white character tendency, you get a 10% bonus to your damage while you're in soul form, which is when you have effectively half life. Normally this wouldn't be such a big deal, but for the sake of the type of run that I'm doing, I wanted to be able to get pure white character tendency, because I wanted the absolute max damage that I could be doing at this point of the game, because the entire reason I wanted to do this NG plus run was because of the Morian Blade Clever Rat Ring combination, which when you are down to extremely low life, below 30%, like I am right now, you get a damage, you get a percentage damage boost to every attack that you do. And this means that you can be doing some really, really obscene amounts of damage, regardless of whether, say, you possess the stats to wield the bow that I'm using, which I don't, but I can still manage to one-shot kill most of the enemies that I hit with it. So for the sake of this run, this challenge, I wanted to completely just max out the, type, the amount of damage that I'd be able to do. Uh, something I kind of have to explain about this particular area of the game and my recording is that anyone who really knows Demon Souls may notice that I am already at pure white world tendency, so pure white character tendency. As you can see in the top left, my uh, my my character tendency symbol in between the two little black runes there is already at the brightest it could go. And this is because this gameplay that you're seeing at the moment is from NG plus two. This is after I already beat the game uh, on NG plus pure black world tendency. And this is because, and this is the footage I'm showing you because when I looked back and found my my footage for this for this first level of the game, I was all over the place. Like I'd only just finished the Soul Level Six playthrough, so uh, I I'll be honest with you, I wasn't. I didn't appreciate how much more difficult and how, how, how easy it would be to just get hit sloppily. So in my original recording on NG+, I was getting hit and I was getting killed a lot. But when I had to, because I lost my recording of killing Black Phantom Satsuki in uh, the original New Game Plus playthrough, I had to go and kill him again in NG plus two, so I figured, well, I'll record Boletarian Palace, and it ended up being a much, much cleaner run. I don't think I actually died here, which is cool. Um, it definitely shows that I got better, which is always... It's another facet of that sense of achievement where I do these things and then I then I realized that, oh, you know, hey, this isn't as hard as it was the first time around. Maybe I can do it a bit harder. So I thought, I, I briefly, briefly entertained the thought of doing an NG plus 7 run, and then I realized that NG plus 7, while it is harder in some aspects, is definitely not the same sort of jump that new game to new game pluses, and this is true in Dark Souls as well, where you can be taking like an eighth of your health from an enemy hit in new game, but in new game plus they take 80 to 90 percent of your health in one hit, and that's the kind of jump it is from new game to new game plus. I would actually dare say that it's more of a jump, because in my first, my, my Soul Level 6 playthrough, I was under the impression that it was going to be very hard, but it wasn't. And it wasn't because I was I could I could just spam grass. I got hit, I could just heal. And when you're doing a 
a challenge like this where you're being one shot, you can't heal, so you have to actually learn to play the game instead of playing, you know, tap the healing button. So there were some interesting moments in this playthrough where I had to completely relearn how to fight bosses like Armor Spider and Tower Knight, which aren't particularly difficult bosses, but until you know how to run around Tower Knight to not get hit by any of his attacks, he's difficult to just not get hit by because he's got a huge area of effect attack, he always does, and it's just difficult to to just learn at a on a on a trial trial and error basis. This is one of those wonderful wonderful uh, aspects of these games because you think you know the game, you play the game through once and then you play it through again at extremely low level and then you play it through again on one of the harder difficulties on ex on at an extremely low level and the game goes, oh you thought you were good? No you're not motherfucker, you know, try again, do it better, learn how to actually play the game, don't just cheese everything. So there's this fantastic learning curve that happens even after you think that you've completely avoided the learning curve. You've you've you're at the top. You're you're done. You're you're doing better than you know most eighty percent of the people who even played the game or bothered to do what you're doing. It's one of the reasons that I and so many others find this game so enchanting because it. It forces you. It doesn't. It doesn't challenge you. It it forces you to learn how to play. And it oftentimes because of this game, the or these games, these Souls games, I have actually found myself being a better gamer. Like I've gone back to older Devil May Cry's and played on the harder difficulties like I never did before because you know, hey, they were hard. I was a kid. I was bad at games. I was just trying to get through the game to the end and when I'd finished I thought wow that was amazing and that was that was difficult and for Devil May Cry 3 on normal difficulty when I was what 12 that was difficult that was hard for me but now that I'm older and I'm just a bit better at things just generally more competent I can force myself to actively learn and get better and these games cater to that to that want or that need if you're that kind of a obsessive compulsive person like many people who play these games are but anyway i've gone off on a bit of a 13 minute tangent which is a fucking long tangent but i <laughs> i need to inform the people who are watching now that this isn't going to me this isn't going to be me strictly talking about what is going on on screen like i'm not going to tell you and then i shot an arrow into this guy's face and he died that's not the kind of thing that i'm looking to do because i am looking to make a a kind of a i'd like to share my experiences with this game in comparison to my experiences with dark souls and with other games in general because I think when I'm passionate about games like I am with these with this series I would like to be able to just share my thoughts and I think that is much more interesting than me going you know oh that was close and just stopping talking every 20 seconds um, and if you'd if you'd like to watch just the challenge, by all means, mute the video. I don't really blame you. I don't. I don't even really like the sound of my own voice, but the option is there. You can either just mute the video, or you can simply not watch. I'm not all that fast because I'm going to be doing this anyway. I'm going to be talking, so you can either listen, or you can not listen, or you can just go somewhere else. Whatever, it's cool with me. So this is the kind of thing where I'm 
I'm essentially making a comparative analysis between two games and other games in general. And I don't don't get me wrong, I, I will be actually talking about what's going on on screen, like for instance now, this fucking dragon that I had to speed up my entire playthrough with because oh god, this thing. I don't know actually I, I do know why this has happened, because they've decided that they were going to booby trap the bridge, which is perfectly fine, but just, I, I'm not a fan of the way I had to take care of it with the bow and arrow, because if I if I didn't take care of it with the bow and arrow, I would have risked moving up with a sword and getting shot. And enemy projectiles in this game, I'm going to make a criticism, is they home in on you, and I don't believe they should. I do not think that just because they are a computer means that their shots should home like they do. They shouldn't curve to hit you because crossbow bolts don't do that. I'm not saying, well, this is, this should be just like real life, um, because I'm not saying that. I'm really not. It just doesn't feel fair when the computer who essentially has perfect aim can shoot from very far away and because they were locked onto you, their bolt, no matter how inaccurate it may have been at the start, curves and finds you. And this is more apparent on the second part of Boletarian Palace, but it is it can be very frustrating as I learned in my first new game sorry, in my first new game plus playthrough of this area, is that Guys with crossbows are dicks, and I'm never giving them the time of day again. So, what you may have noticed so far, in this video in particular, is that I've been using the bow and arrow a lot. And, in my first NG Plus bit, I didn't really use the bow and arrow a lot, and that was why I died a whole heck of a lot, because the first area of Demon Souls, this Boletarian Palace 1-1, is just, it can be quite difficult, and the boss isn't particularly difficult, this boss that I'm fighting right now, Phalanx, he's, he's a bit annoying, but he's basically just a bunch of the standard enemies with an annoying ranged attack, and the reason that doing it with the bow and arrow is so much easier is because you have an item called the Thief's Ring, and the Thief's Ring basically makes it so that enemies don't really know that you're there unless you get really really close to them so what you can do is wear it and say if you're in hyper mode like I am and you're doing stupid amounts of damage with every arrow you can one shot enemies from further away than they can see you so if you're having issues with an area where you know, there are lots of ranged enemies, or there are just a few enemies that you don't even want to take care of, then all you have to do is take out the bow and arrow, and it can be extremely simple. And something I really, really want to point out, because I have seen, uh, since the recording, I have seen Amaral's playthrough of uh, The Valley of Defilement, uh, so, and just this game in general, and he used the bow a lot. And I'm going to be saying to anyone else who uh, thinks that I'm just trying to show off what I've done with the, with the game, is that I'm not. I'm really not trying to show off what I've done. This is me showing you a an, an efficient path through this game while I make my observations and I, I give you my commentary about the game as a whole and the the soul series as a whole and just that kind of a that kind of a thing so please if you're thinking about saying well oh what are you doing are you being so tentative or why are you standing back with the fucking bow you know why are you, why are you being such a such a coward I know at points in this game, I am I uh, I am disappointed with my Valley of Defilement playthrough because 
Valley of Defilement was basically all using a bow. I very rarely actually hit something apart from the bosses with a sword. And Leechmonger, the first boss of the Valley of Defilement, I just plain didn't hit without a bow, which is... Uh, I don't know. It couldn't even hit me, so I was in literally no danger, but I just spent the last 18 minutes getting through the Valley of Defilement with the bow, just trying not to get hit, and I don't know, honestly, of a way to face the Leechmonger hand-to-hand -hand without getting hit, because the area around his base, like around the base of the boss, is made of leeches and these leeches will grab onto your character and damage you and in and in ng plus where i'm trying to essentially stack damage when i get hit i when i get hit even if it's by these fucking leeches i die and i don't know how many times i fucking died in the valley of defilement but i died a lot i died a lot and then 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 i, then I just went no nah, you know what Easy mode, this needs to get recorded, so I pulled out the bow and it was... It wasn't super, super easy, but it was a whole lot less stressful and there was a whole lot less broken controller going on. So the only thing I can offer in my defense is basically... I've tried not to cheese the game, but when I feel the game has given me nearly no other choice and I wasn't having any fun anymore, I decided to cheese it, as with the Valley of Defilement. But this has been the first episode of my NG Plus Pure Black World Tendency Soul Level 6 playthrough of Demon Souls. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video where we take on the second part of Boletarian Palace, I believe, with the Tower Knight. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.